demonstration for lab six in this course. Uh, we will be working with taking some measurements for boiling point and vapor pressure. Um, so the equipment in front of us here, we have a uh, pressure gauge over here. And this is a vacuum pump that we're gonna be using to pull a vacuum in this jar over here. So the, in the first part of the lab, what we need to do is we need to uh, get a rough estimate on what the atmospheric pressure is in the room here. So uh, this jar right now, uh, I've got this valve open and it is, uh, the jar is at atmospheric pressure right now. Um, and in the first part of the lab, what we're gonna be doing is turning this pump on uh, with, nothing, with nothing in the jar and seeing what our, what our uh, pressure gauge reads over here for a pressure. It's gonna be a negative pressure because right now this is zeroed at atmospheric pressure. So this is like a gauge pressure measurement right now at zero. And we're gonna be pulling a vacuum here. So this is gonna go to a negative, a negative pressure. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the pump on here. Uh, first, I'm just going to shut, shut our valve, put this cap on here. Oops, that's the wrong cap. Put this cap on here uh, because what's going to happen when I turn this pump on, this is the suction side here. So what it's going to do is it's going to suck on our gauge and it's also going to suck on the, uh, the uh, jar over here and it's going to pull as much air out of the jar as possible. Uh, this here is capped off right now. We want this plug so we don't have any air coming in. But with, with when I, this is shut, so when I open it, it's going to start sucking on these two lines here and discharging the air out here of, of the pump. So I've got this shut at the moment. Uh, just make sure I have power on. Flip this switch on. You can hear the pump turn on. And now what I'll do, we're still reading zero here. I'm gonna open this valve and it's gonna start sucking on both the gauge and the jar here. So I'll do that. And you'll see, you should see our pressure start to drop. Let's open this all the way. And what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna let this pump warm up. I'm gonna let it sit for about two minutes or so. They recommend it warm up. And we're gonna take a reading here of our atmospheric or sorry, of our, uh, of our vacuum that we've pulled here. And it's roughly gonna be equal to our atmospheric pressure. So we'll just wait two minutes and we'll so bring you back. It's good and warm here. And you can see it's about negative 91.33 is where it seems to kind of stabilize that there you can see. So our rotor atmospheric pressure up here is 91.33 kPa. Uh, no water in the jar over there you can see. And um, the uh, that was what we needed to do in our first part of our lab here is we need to start the pump up and let it warm up for two minutes with an empty jar and record um, what that what that pressure is. It's a negative value. We record it as a positive value. We're assuming that we've sucked everything out of that that jar. Of course, we can't suck everything out. Otherwise, it would, it would uh, implode. But um, that's what we're going to take our atmospheric pressure as. So it's uh, not a perfect vacuum, but it definitely pulled uh, a decent vacuum on the jar there. So... That's so our first reading. reading. I've added some water to the jar here and I've got ice in there too. So the water, if you look over at our Fluke 725 here, it's at about zero degrees C. Or zero point, you take zero point two as our reading. Now I'm gonna go and turn the pump on. I've, we had uh, reintroduced atmospheric pressure here, so we're right around zero. Um, I've got the valve shut here. I'm gonna turn on our pump. And I'm gonna open this valve here and suck it back down, suck the pressure down. What we want to watch here, you can see that we didn't get quite as low. We're getting close. But if we look over here in the jar right now, you can see bubbles forming. And that's because the water is actually boiling off at about zero degrees right now. So um, we're at about 0 0.2 we estimated. I'll maybe just give this jar a little shake here. And there you can see it's boiling right now. So at about 0 0.2, degree C we have we have water boiling and we want to record our pressure here at negative negative 91.25 we're gonna go with water boiling over here and what we need to do here is we need to take some readings so our first temperature is at 0.2 degrees C we need to take a reading off of our gauge here 
and then calculate what her vapor pressure is in that jar. So um, right now with the pump, just make sure this is there, I need to open this valve. This valve open to the jar, you can see we're back down to about negative 91. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna shut this valve and it's gonna trap that vacuum uh, in our lines right here to our gauge. Because right now we're probably reading a little bit lower than, than um, our vapor pressure because we're boiling, we're lower than our vapor pressure, so we're boiling. So if I just shut this here, you can see the pressure kind of rose up a little bit. So we'll take our reading for our pressure as, let's just wait here, 90.8. 90.81 will take. Our two readings into the table here, and what I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna go down the table and, and do this for, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten points that we'll take. We're gonna go all the way up to, um, we're gonna go from ten points between zero and about 100 degrees C, I believe is what we have here. Temperatures between zero and 100 degrees C. So that's what our goal is here, is to get ten different, so hopefully, we can get them fairly evenly spaced. So uh, we'll do the next, I'll, do, I'll demonstrate the next one, but I'm not gonna demonstrate all of these, I'll demonstrate about two more of these, um, and then you'll have all the results that you need for completing this lab here. So this, this, uh, this row over here, the vapor pressure row, it gives the information in here on how to calculate, how to calculate the vapor pressure of water at each temperature. So that's what you guys are going to be doing in this Our lab. Our next sample here is a temperature of water about 13, 12.7, 12.7 degrees C. So we're going to put the cap on here and see if we can get this to boil off again. 12.7 degrees C. I had an ice cube in there and it just finished right, dissolving. So here we go. We're going to turn on the pump. And we're going to open our valve here and suck the pressure down. And there you can see it's uh, boiling here at about 12.7 degrees C. And what I'll do now is I'm just gonna shut this valve. We've got it good and boiling. Shut this valve and record our, we're at negative 89.8. Six. All right, so for this temperature, we're at uh, right around room temperature at 20.3. So let's see where it boils off here. All right, so here we go. We'll turn the pump on. This valve is shut good. Reading zero gauge pressure. I'm gonna open this. See the pressure falling here. boiling again so once we're boiling here I can shut this valve lock in the pressure so you can take a reading here 80 negative 89 point negative 89.17 we'll go with so one three readings uh, we had about 20.3 degrees C and we got negative 89.17 so you can see it's slowly starting to climb here. Um, our, uh, our gauge pressure is slowly starting to climb. So now we're gonna have to add some hot water here to bring this up to about 30 degrees C will be our goal and I'll just keep going down all the way up to 100. As you can see, um, once we got up to that hot temperature about 88.4, uh, you can see our gauge pressure here. The vacuum we pulled had to be a lot less to get it to boil. Uh, and then I let it stabilize and record the vapor pressure and the temperature here. Uh, just to show you what I ended up having to do here when it got really hot, I had to wrap my sweater around it here because the temperature would start to cool off so fast and that helped to maintain it quite a bit. Um, and what I was doing here is this valve, just to point this out, this when you shut this valve, it just isolates this T up here from the suction. So I could shut that valve and then let everything stabilize the pressure and everything uh, in here and that worked quite good. Uh, and I'd, once I'd shut this valve, I'd just wait, wait for the water to stop boiling. And then we knew we were at our vapor pressure at that temperature. So I would uh, record the pressure, quickly bleed the system down and record the temperature. Uh, and then I got a fairly good, uh, the temperature wasn't changing a whole lot. I was able to do it quite quickly. So we've got all of our readings here now. So you're gonna have to go ahead and figure out the vapor pressure here. 
And then in part two of the lab here, you're gonna complete, you're gonna graph all these points here. And there's some information here on how to do that, to graph the points. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna generate a graph in part three here, using the Clausius Clapeyron equation. Hopefully I said that right, the Clausius Clapeyron equation. And that is uh, the formula for the relationship between pressure, um, uh, sorry, temperature, temperature, absolute temperature, and vapor pressure of a gas. So we're working with water here. And so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be looking at and we're gonna be comparing um, the results we got over here with our equipment to what the clausius clapeyron or Clapeyron equation uh, says and comparing those two. And it should draw a similar, should be a similar relationship. So um, we, uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll make sense what we did there. Um, but yeah, we pulled, we pulled the vacuum in the jar here and waited for it to boil and waited for the boiling to kind of settle down and recorded the uh, temperature and pressure that uh, everything was at. So uh, that should be all for now.